Water is the lifeblood of any aquarium system, and properly testing and treating that water is imperative to ensure the health of your inhabitants in your fish room. So one thing that I've never done is to test the entire fish barn water system from where it starts in the house to the point where it ends up in a fish tank. So today, let's go ahead and do that test. So let's quickly walk through how water gets to the fish barn. Water is pumped from the house and into the fish barn where it goes through this push system, which consists of two sediment filters and then a carbon block filter to remove the chlorine. At that point, if it's for a freshwater aquarium, it goes directly to a 55 gallon food grade barrel. And if it's for a saltwater tank, it then goes through a deionization resin, which then goes into a separate 55 gallon barrel. Each barrel has a float switch, which prevents overflows. So I wanna go ahead and start my testing at the beginning basically where the water leaves the house. So in our test today, we're gonna to be testing TDS, or total dissolved solids, ammonia, chlorine, general hardness, which is the magnesium and calcium ions in your water, KH, or carbonate hardness, which is the buffering capacity of your water, nitrate, nitrite, and pH. To test the TDS, I'm going to be using a TDS meter, which measures the conductivity of the molecules in the water to determine its concentration. There is a downside to the TDS meter and the fact that it doesn't tell you what the dissolved solid actually is. And that dissolved solid could be a wide range of different elements or materials. So we'll have to take this testing a little bit further. So to take this test a little bit further, I'm gonna be using the ammonia strips and the multi-test strips from the Aquarium Co-op. You can purchase these at theaquariumcoop.com. For transparency purposes, I do wanna let you know that I am a brand ambassador for the Aquarium Co-op, so I may receive free or discounted priced products from time to time. So let's go ahead and get a sample for this test. So let's go ahead and get our reading for the TDS. To do this, you just turn the TDS meter on and stick the electrodes in the water. This will give you the reading. For the water coming out of the tap, we found that the TDS was 118 parts per million. So let's go ahead and test the ammonia. The directions for the ammonia test strip is to submerge the pad into the water and gently swirl for 30 seconds and then remove the strip and immediately compare to the provided color chart. So for our ammonia test, we got a result of 0.5. So moving on with the multi-test strip, you need to submerge the strip and swirl all of the pads for three seconds and then pull the strip out, keeping it horizontal for 60 seconds and then check the color chart. So for the multi-strips, we got the following results. So now let's go ahead and test the two 55 gallon food barrels using the same method above. So first we're gonna go ahead and test the fresh water barrel. And for the fresh water barrel, we've got the following results. And then moving on to the saltwater barrel. And we got the final results there. So finally, let's go ahead and test one of the more newly set up fish tanks in the barn and see what our results are. So now comes the important part. What did the results tell us? So let's take a look at the results here and see what we can glean from it. The first thing 
is I definitely do have hard, high pH water that has a lot of buffer. While this is something that I've already suspected by talking to members of my local fish club, all of who are on the same water system, it was definitely good to have confirmation of this fact. It was also good to know that the chlorine in my source water was not off the charts and that my water system was doing a good job of removing the chlorine before it got to the fish. However, there is one area that I do need to address and that's the salt water system. I figured there would be some TDS in the system after it left the DI resin, but I didn't think it'd be as high as 80. So I'll definitely be looking into adding an RO membrane very quickly here in the near future. So I'll be definitely doing some more water tests like this in the near future here in the fish tank barn. So if you want to learn more about your water, you can look up data from your municipality. Could I also put a link to an article in the description if you want to learn more about the elements of your water, as well as a link to the aquarium co-op test strips. So with that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.